Hello and welcome to the Al Janoub Stadium in Qatar for the AFC Champions League round of 16. We're here for the clash between Al Shabab of Saudi Arabia and Uzbekistan's FC Nasaf Kashi. I'm Brian Murgatroyd and looking forward to this encounter at a fantastic venue. A little bit chilly this evening, but uh, it really is uh, a wonderful bowl of a stadium. There won't be too much breeze down pitch level. Uh, there's a reflection of the fact that it is a little bit chilly this evening. You can see the spectators wrapped up. But it really is going to be a fantastic match tonight. There's no doubt about that. It's the first time at this stage for Nasaf, the first side from Uzbekistan to win an AFC title when they lifted the AFC Cup in 2011. But this is a whole new level for them now. They're up against a real form side. Al-Shabaab, they're unbeaten in their last seven matches in the Saudi Professional League, winning the past four. And they've conceded only one goal in the group stage of this competition in reaching the round of 16. Nasaf, uh, well, they're actually out of season. The new Uzbek Super League only starts early next month. So you can uh, say they're either fresh or undercooked. And the next 90 minutes will give us an answer. A few Shabab fans in this evening. Looking forward to the action, as we all are, at this wonderful stadium, which was inaugurated back in May 2019. The first match here was in May of that year, the Amir Cup between Al Saad and Al Duhail. They actually hosted the uh, semi-final in the 2019 Gulf Cup with Saudi Arabia winning 1-0 against Qatar in front of uh, 42,000 fans. Seven matches were hosted here in the FIFA World Cup in November and December. Six group games and a round of 16 clash between Japan and Croatia, which went to penalties. If we're level tonight at the end of extra time, we'll go to penalties too. Nasaf playing in their red strip this evening. And Al Shabab in white. Two teams in the tunnel waiting to come out along with the match officials. A decent number of uh, spectators have made their way in this evening in support of Nasaf. The referee this evening, Adam Mohamed Markadmed from Jordan. Two assistant referees also from Jordan. The fourth official is from Iraq, and our VAR official is from the United Arab Emirates. Teams on their way then. It's the Qatar hub for this western region of the AFC Champions League. It's been a long journey to get to this stage for these teams. Group stage was last April, but now the AFC Champions League, the 41st edition of the competition, boiling up nicely, all towards the final over two legs in April and May of this year. Handshakes all round. Isn't that nice to see? After uh, the Covid years. Incidentally, so before we get underway, the players will be uh, standing around the centre circle in solidarity of Syria and Turkey and the terrible events there. Let's have a look at the two teams. Al Shabab, first of all, two changes from their last match a 2 0 win versus Abba in the Saudi Professional League five days ago. Two very significant changes to Carlos Junior, the top scorer in this competition. He's out. He lost his passport, only arrived late last night. 
Also missing is the Polish international Gregor Krakowiak, key man number 10, Eva Benega, the Argentinian international, into the side in place of uh, Krakowiak and Carlos Junior, number 88, Nada Al Sharari, and number 11, Hatan Barbri. There's confirmation of our match officials. Two captains, Benega. Uh, also number 18 you see down there at the bottom of your list this is the list number 10 I should say Norcev and he's going to be a key man for uh, Nasaf this evening let's focus on him the 21 year old forward exciting young player just 21 nine goals in last season so he's back Super League they're missing Serbian Marco uh, Stanevich, though, he featured in every minute of the group stage. He's their top scorer in this tournament with three goals. In goal, they have a 21-year-old, Nemetov, part of the Uzbek under-23 squad that reached the final of the AFC under-23 Asian Cup in Uzbekistan last summer, along with Norcheyev, who we've mentioned already, and number two, Albek uh, Davranov. Getting ready now for that mark of respect and solidarity following the ter terrible events brought about by the earthquake in Syria and Turkey. Ladies and gentlemen, the those of Beautifully observed silence. There's uh, Rizikul Berdiev, the coach of uh, Nasaf. And he was saying in the build-up to this match, we're at this stage and we don't want to stop here. Well, there's one man who's going to try and stop him this evening, Vincente Moreno, the Al-Shabaab coach. Spaniard arrived at the club in July of 2022. Burdiev, incidentally, he's been in charge for over a decade at uh, Nasaf, club legend, played for the club, has contributed to every trophy they've won, either as a player or a coach. Wouldn't it be a dream come true if he could add another trophy, the AFC Champions League? to that trophy cabinet. So our referee, Adam Mohamed Mark Ahmed from Jordan, getting ready to get us underway. And it's going to be Al-Shabaab who are going to uh, start proceedings in their white strip. Here we go. Underway then with Al-Shabaab playing from left to right on your screens and straight away they seat possession but then get it back on that far side. Cross comes in, and a shot from distance. Just over the top. 
was uh, Hussein Al Katani with the strike. First time hit. Take comfortably over Nemetov's crossbar. Al Shabab mentioned already fine form in this competition. Does seem an absolute eternity since they last played in it. April of last year was the group stage. stage they scored 18 goals and only conceded one flag up on the far side free kick to Moreno's men and a wry smile did uh, Vincente Moreno when he was asked about Carlos Junior remarkable turn of events with the striker losing his passport big loss at the top of the pitch for Al Shabab five goals one of the keys for Al Shabab in this tournament it's got to be a foul for his goal kick for his assistant flagging I thought initially that challenge by uh, Norchev number 10 be penalised, it wasn't. The man he clashed with there was Hassan Al Tambakti. Yes, Al Shabab. Nine different scorers for them in the group stages. Goals from all over the pitch. Just that one conceded against uh, the Iraqi side Air Force on match day three. Goals, goals, goals from them. 3-0 win over Mumbai City, a 3-0 win over Al Jazeera from the UAE. 1-1 against uh, Air Force, then 3-0 in the return fixture. 6-0 against uh, Mumbai City. And then the final match in the group stage, a 2-0 victory over Al Jazeera of the UAE. Public keeper, vastly experienced. Picked up by Tambakti. Played to this near side, but uh, no chance at all for Fawaz Ali Mazouk to get hold of that one. Playing it right back this evening, number 27. Tumbling header away by Nada Al Sharari, number 88. That's a foul. Al Katani in the thick of things already. Just caught by Mozgoyev. Pressing by Shabab and good skill as well by Ali Mazouk. Sharari back to Tambakti. To knock the ball around early on. Al Shabab. On that far side, Motab Al Harbi. It's his birthday tomorrow, 23. And playing left back this evening. forward looking for Santi Mina and good work from Nemetov off his line quickly 
read it perfectly. Another ball forward looking for Mina, and again, it's an action replay. Nematov with the clearance. Sharahili uh, turning, number uh, 89. Christine Goanka, the Argentinian, back after a loan spell last season at Al Ali in the UAE, and here he is now again. Trying to fashion space for a shot. The shot comes in, it's blocked. Bozarov tries to get away and is fouled. Oybek Bozarov. Yellow card, in fact, first one of the, of the evening. Showed against Hassan Al Tambakti. That's why, quite a cynical pullback from him. A problem now, there, for him because, of course, he's going to be walking the tightrope for the rest of the match. Challenged in the air by Nazruliev, number 34. She's at Nazruliev. Quite an advanced role. Often see him as a wing back. Just pushed up the pitch this evening. Looking for the return ball from uh, Bozarov. Clearance comes in. by uh, Barbary. Pushed out to this uh, near side, our commentary position side in this uh, Al Janoub Stadium. Ricocheting around, not much space in the middle of the park. decides to go back in order to try and go forward. Beautiful surface this match is taking place on. Pitch was watered about 20 minutes before the start of play. So it should be nice and slick. Kulov, number four. Yes. Oh. 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 couldn't keep that one in. 24-year-old NASAF player throughout his career. This is actually just his second start in the AFC Champions League. Played an additional game, have uh, Nasaf to Al Shabab as they played in a qualifier against Banias in the UAE, which they won 2 0 in order to go through to the group stages. Had to fight through a very tough group, uh, too. Al Fazali of Saudi Arabia were there, Al Saad of Qatar, and uh, with that of Jordan. Chev pushed out wide. A little give and go from him. Gets the ball into the danger area. Did that hit a hand? Corner's been given. Was ricocheting around. Just wondered if that bounced up and hit the arm of uh, Ali Mazouk. Nice to see some respect between the players there. It's going to be a corner. 
first corner of the evening. And it goes Nasef's way. And all the way to the back post. Gabuliev was there and he couldn't bring it under control. A little bit more time perhaps than he realised. Davranov across the pitch to Gabuliev. Picked up now by Mosgovoy. Akmal Mosgovoy. 23 year old midfielder. One of three players to play every minute of this AFC Champions League qualifying campaign. Oh, it's in, yes! It took a deflection. Shabab strike. Al Katani, the goal scorer, he'll claim it. Joy on the bench for Shabab. But that really was so cruel for Nasaf. If you're going to be ultra critical, you could say that Al Katani had the opportunity to run and run. He wasn't challenged, but there's the deflection. Came off. Ali Kulov just caught his heel and even though Nemetov tried to get his foot to the ball he couldn't keep it out joy unconfined for Shabab and joy for al Qatani. in the 12th minute then Shabab go ahead Football can be a cruel mistress. Nasaf will certainly feel that. It's the merest of touches from Ali Kulov, but it was enough to send the ball in a different path. Wrong footed Nematov. Shabab hit the front. Katani, not uh, a big scorer of goals, just scored one goal in the Saudi Professional League last season. It's his second goal of the AFC Champions League campaign. He also scored against Air Force. Now, what have Nasef got in response? Side, Nazruliev. Possession uh, squandered. Guanka. This is the opportunity that Shabab really enjoyed. The chance to knock it around in a relaxed manner. The front runners are used to success this season, but that's a poor ball. Nazruliev cuts inside. Still in possession. And, uh, is that a penalty? Sidikov was the man who went down. Javakir Sidikov. Well, that was uh, a definite move by uh, Altan Bakti. Squirting his leg backwards, I think he can consider himself just a little bit fortunate to get away with that. Remember, he's been booked already as well. It 
exactly what that man didn't want. The early goal against his side. Gurdiev on the edge of his technical area. And headed back to his keeper by Davra. have got then they haven't been prolific scorers in this uh, competition ten goals in their seven matches prior to this evening so it's really difficult to beat though two clean sheets in the group stage plus a clean sheet Qualifier against Banias of the UAE. Lofted forward by Mosgoyev. Picked up now by number 77, Santimina. He's there with the header, he doesn't get the contact that he wanted. And in the end, it can't be kept in on this uh, near side. Or anchor it was, who was doing his best to keep it in. He'd be disappointed with that, Mina. It was a presentable opportunity. Shirari goes all the way back to his keeper. The noise you can hear is the Al Shabab fans enjoying themselves, and they'll enjoy themselves even more now if uh, Goanka can get his side moving forward. On the ball again now, Christian Goanka. The ball inside to Al Qatani. Play switched over to the far side. Oteb Al Harbi. Trying to uh, pass their way through and not quite able to do so. Shabab. It's a sloppy header out of play by Al Sharari. Again, part of good things for Shabab at the moment. And again, but can't uh, retain possession on that occasion. Davranov providing a little bit of nuisance value. went down defending with a very high line Asaf Kashi side is relief this cross goes awry it's not Nassaf's uh, first AFC Champions League campaign they've had four previous ones all of them ending in the group stages in 2012 2015 2016 and 2018. It's 
Rulief trying to burst forward. They want to find a way through. Govoy gets the ball inside to number 92, wearing the captain's armband. Shmuradov. Another give and go by Norchev. Side. Prior to this campaign for Nasaf, 25 games in the AFC Champions League, won seven, drawn six, lost 12. Oh, the volley is off target. Presentable opportunity again. The man who skied that one over was uh, Mananov, number 15. And he joined. Nasaf actually in January. Rejoined, I should say, because he was on loan at Samarkand for the previous season. He was part of the uh, Nasaf squad. He was runner up in the AFC Cup in 2021 against Al Muharraq of Bahrain. Primarily a defender, and I think that. Uh, finish that we saw a short while ago, albeit a very technically difficult one. An illustration is not a natural goal scorer. First appearance in the AFC Champions League in this campaign for him because of that lone spell away. Just about halfway through the first half then. Al Qatani's deflected strike is the difference between the two sides. Very tricky assignment in more ways than one for Nasaf because they're not in the middle of their uh, season, far from it. Uzbek Super League only gets underway again in the early stages of next month. Goanka off target. Christian Goanka. It's reverted to his natural hair colour this season. Last season when he was with uh, Alain in the UAE, he was bleach blonde for the whole uh, of that campaign. Absolute prime of his career now, though, Goanka. His third season overall with uh, Al Shabab. Also played with uh, Al Itifak in Saudi as well as uh, Alain. And he's played in Turkey and Ecuador too. He scored three goals actually with. Uh, Shabab in the Champions League campaign of 2019-20. Nega out to this near side. And on the ball again now. And a terrific player he's been and continues to be. Al Shabab very much relying on him. It's his third season with the team. Goanka trying to bring that one down so nicely. Benega now on this near side. 
Copenhagen has led Al Shabab to the top of the Saudi Professional League. And back to this round of 16 for the first time since 2014. 65 times capped by Argentina. It was all about pressure of knockout football. Three Europa League titles with Sevilla. Ali Mazouk with the cross, and that's easy enough for Nemetov. Will be a, a frustrated figure in that goal for Nasaf because aside from picking the ball out of the net, from that deflected effort from Al Qatani, he hasn't in truth had a great deal to do. In fact, neither goalkeeper's been particularly busy so far. Very much a game of chess between these two teams. Manega. It's off down the uh, left wing. Looking to get on the end of that uh, ball. It was uh, a little bit too far ahead of him. Well read by Nemetov. Muradov, oldest player in the side for Nasaf, the captain. Here he is again, 30 years of age. Another one of the players to have played every minute of the AFC Champions League campaign. Picked up now by Bozarov. Jinking effort from uh, Mosgovoy. Couldn't jink his way through, though. Akmel Mosgovoy. Two goals in the AFC Champions League. In this particular edition. At the start of the round of 16, we had teams from Six different countries still in contention for the title. The Rawa Red Diamonds from Japan already through to the final. From the eastern region. Three teams from Saudi Arabia. Two from Qatar, one from each from Uzbekistan, Iran and the UAE. Menega there, not taking too kindly to the challenge on him by Sidikov. Chev loses out. Goanka. Anchor again. Plays the ball back to uh, Al Sharari. Here is Nada Al Sharari. he was fouled nothing given the referee was in good position to adjudicate Venegas stayed down that one's put into touch so Benega will uh, be able to receive some treatment just caught okay Bulev was the man with that challenge, but the referee saw nothing untoward in it. Oleg Gebuliev. It's 
his third AFC Champions League campaign with uh, NASAF. Also part of their uh, campaigns in 2017 and 2018. Easy enough for Nemetov. First real side of goal for Santi Mina. It's the referee given here. He's given a free kick. See, Nochev was uh, demanding a card. And of course, that's uh, Tambakti. was the shot from Mina. Well, Tambakti sailing close to the wind, you could say. The pull on the shirt. On another occasion, perhaps the referee might have deemed that a bookable offence. He didn't. If he had, Tambakti would have uh, had his marching orders. Kim organising the wall. Only going to be two players in it by the looks of things. All the good intentions of Nasaf come to nothing. Oh, a lovely little flick. Here's an opportunity. And in the end, well done by Nemetov. Really well done. Tremendous run forward by Al Harbi from the left back position. In the end, he couldn't produce a finish to match. up in the center of the pitch by Muscovoy. Masaf just asking a few questions here. Al-Shabaab needing to be on their metal defensively. Goanka trying to set them clear now though. Benega gets the ball forward to uh, Ali Mazouk and in the end he couldn't quite bring it under control. Flag stayed down. Ozarov. And a little bit disappointing. Couldn't pick out a teammate just when the situation was promising. Ball sweeping from end to end at the moment. Mina plays the ball back to Benega. Shot from distance. And Barbary it was. Here's Barbary's shot. Optimistic to say the least. The other end. Was there a hand involved there, I wonder? The referee thought otherwise, and VAR not interested. Great run that though by Al Harbi. The length of the pitch at great pace. Shabab supporters behind Kim's goal, the ones making the noise at the moment. NASA fans congregated around the halfway line. They're a little bit more subdued, it's fair to say. Ruliev does well. In the 
the end. The throw in goes the other way. Katani, the goal scorer, took it. Tambakti. Al Sharari. Sharahili. Mina with his back to goal. Nicely done by uh, Sidikov. Mananov involved as well. Plenty of uh, reasons to be encouraged for the Nassau fans at the moment. What they've lacked is just the ability to create a clear cut chance thus far. Oh, goodness me, they might get one now. Terrible mistake. Oh, and yes, is it in? No, it's off the stanchion. Just holding the net up at the back. I thought for a minute the net had rippled. What a dreadful error at the back by Al Shabab. A no look pass from Al Sharari. You can see the net rippling there. Bozarov it was with the shot and it was heading for the top corner or at least that's uh, what he was hoping not to be though at the other end Mina with a rather tame effort closest to Nassaf have come to a goal so far to show that Al Shabab can't afford to uh, take anything for granted to maintain their concentration. Is this going to be kept in? It is. A little bit of control lacking by Bozarov, though. On the wrong side of the pitch for him, really. Pretty much a right footer. Oybek Bozarov. Six goals in the Uzbek Super League last season for him. His best goal scoring season of his career, actually. He's been part of every single match in this AFC Champions League campaign. This is his seventh start this evening, plus one substitute appearance against uh, Al Fazali. At the other end now. Ali Mazouk trying to get on the end of that, not able to do so. I'm sure Moreno's not going to be entirely happy with what he's seen from his team thus far. They're a goal to the good. They've been a little bit sloppy up to this point. Just over five minutes to go then in this first half. I mean, too many stoppages to speak of. Kim opts for safety, getting the ball into touch. Cheyev can't uh, pick up the scraps there from that pass by Mozgovoy. Goanka threading the ball through to uh, Panega. Oh, lovely skill from the Argentinian. And it's just behind Goanka. So close for a second for Shabab there.
Alex Ruliev. Challenge from behind by uh, Mina. Nothing was given. Ball sprayed out to the far side. Picked up by number 21, Sidakov. Cross comes in, easy enough for Kim. Guanka, a little bit of time. Play keep ball with Benega. To this near side, Ali Mazouk. Again, good pressing this from Nasaf. Was Govoy with the challenge. From Goanka. Push in the back by uh, Davronov. Shabab thought so, the referee didn't. Shmuradov out to the far side. A bit of space for uh, Maninov trying to get the cross over. In fact, it's uh, a throw in. Everyone assumed it was going out for a corner. their time for Nasaf to try and get back on level terms for the end of this first half. Thrown in by Mananov, and that will be a corner this time. Conceded by Al Sharari. Second corner then for Nasaf, as you can see from the graphic in the top left-hand corner of your screen. Shabab haven't had one as yet. A little bit of argy bargy in the penalty area. And the referee just having a chat with uh, Al Tambakti. Must surely be on a last warning now. Having been yellow carded already. <laughs> Challenge from Nazruliev. Ball doesn't break his way though. It's a chance now for Al Shabab to burst forward. Benega tries to get the shot away, not able to do so. by Maninov. Into the last minute then of the first half. Sarai, the fourth official from Iraq. To just uh, let us know how many minutes there are going to be uh, added on, and you can see there just the one, a minimum of one to be played at the end of this first half. Ali Mazouk's throw, Santimina taking a tumble. The free kick actually went the way of uh, Nasaf. Starved of service, really, in the first half as Mina. Well, he did have that opportunity of a flick header at the near post that he didn't make the most of. 
that apart though it's been slim pickings for the Spaniard I'm sure he won't mind though as long as uh, Shabab win this evening they're halfway to that target at the moment throw in on this near side by Nazruliev Indeed, that is the uh, last action of the first period. A period that hasn't seen an awful lot of goal mouth activity. Plenty of endeavour from both teams. And one goal to separate them from Hussein al Qatani, his second goal of this campaign. A deflected effort which came off uh, Ali Kulov and wrong footed Nemetov in the uh, Nasaf goal was on 12 minutes and that's the strike that separates these two teams plenty to be encouraged about from uh, a Nassaf perspective but they just need to find a little bit of a cutting edge in terms of attack it's fair to say that uh, Shabab certainly haven't had things all their own way a reminder though they've conceded just one goal in this AFC Champions League campaign so they're going to be difficult nuts to crack as far as Nassaf are concerned let's have a look at some statistics from that first half then Shabab but just ahead in terms of possession percentage but uh, they've had uh, six shots three of them on target and Nassaf you can see yet to really test Kim so half time here at the Al Janoub Stadium in uh, Qatar and it's Al Shabab 1 Nasaf 0 
Welcome back to the Al Janoub Stadium in Qatar, where we're getting ready for the second half of this round of 16 match in the AFC Champions League between Al Shabab of Saudi Arabia and FC Nasaf of Uzbekistan. It's Al Shabab who hold the advantage at the moment. Courtesy of a 12th minute goal by Hussein Al Qatani. It was a deflected effort. Here he is. And despite that deflection, I'm sure he'll claim it. Al Shabab, one of three sides in the Western region who were unbeaten through the group stages, the others being Fulad of Iran and Shabab Al Ali of the United Arab Emirates. Are they going to remain unbeaten after the next 45 minutes, I wonder? So much at stake, a place in the quarter-final. And straight away, that's out of play. As Nasaf in the red strip are playing from left to right on your screens. The coach, Burdiev. He said before the match that uh, he was enjoying himself and he didn't want uh, the ride to end for Nasaf, but it will if they can't find a goal. It's given away to Mina, trying to get the ball back inside to Gawanka, not able to do so. And they're coming together on that far side. Davronov with the challenge on Mina, nothing was given. Let's have a look at that coming together. Well, you could argue there that uh, it should be a free kick. In fact, the free kick has been awarded. In fact, no. Corner. Well, let's see if they can make use of this dead ball situation, Al Shabab. Benega with the corner comes to nothing. Eva Benega was uh, a willing recipient of the ball in that first half. He wasn't able to do an awful lot with it, though. Though he wasn't in a club of one in that regard. Not an awful lot to challenge the uh, two goalkeepers in the first 45 minutes. What are we going to see by way of goal mouth action in this second period? chilly evening here about uh, 20 kilometers south of central Doha wonderfully appointed stadium though retractable roof which is open temperature in the high teens chance on this uh, near side for Gebuliev on the ball again now Captain, Captain. Picked up now by Mananov. Gets away from the challenge, gets the cross in. And in the end, quick reflexes from Kim to spot the danger and grab the loose ball. Good work, though, by Jurabek Mananov on this right-hand side, whipping the cross over. Of course, a little bit of confusion in the Shabab defence. Long ball, Mina with a little header back. Barbary with the shot, blocked by Davronov. Atan Barbary, in his second season with Al Shabab, joined from Al Hilal, who are in action tomorrow evening, the defending champions against the, the UAE's Shabab Al Ali in the final of the uh, four quarter finals to be played over these two days here in Qatar. Barbary was actually part of the World Cup squad for Saudi Arabia in this country last year, made a couple of substitute appearances for Saudi Arabia. Famously, of course, they overcame Argentina 2-1 
their opening group game. Still couldn't progress. Offside. Flag up on that far side. Norcheyev was challenging. Got no change out of the defender, though. Shmuradov, the captain. Man and off once more. Little nutmeg. Give and go, gets the ball back and wins the corner. Does well there. In the end, good defensive work from Riyad. Sharahili coming across to uh, snuff out the danger. Another corner then for Nasaf. It's been something they've been leading on in this match, if not on the score sheet. Benega out to the near side. Mina found himself on the left wing. And there's uh, Benega, very frustrated. It's been the story of the match, really, for uh, all players, whether they're talented like uh, Benega, or perhaps not quite as talented as the uh, former Argentina international. Hasn't been that level of fluency that either team would want. NASA fans on the uh, far side of the ground at the top of your screen doing their best to get behind their team. Very high line played by Al Shabab. Ball over the top, looking for Man and off, couldn't find him. Kim in goal for Al Shabab. Joined last summer from J League side. Kashiwa Raisol. He's actually won this competition with uh, Ulsan of the uh, Korean Republic. He was the substitute keeper way back in 2012. He loved to get his hands on some silverware here. That's the man front and centre from a goalkeeping perspective. Ali Mazouk, he's got the throw on that far side for Al Shabab. Passing movement sets away Mananov. Squares the ball. Oh, it's over the top. The best chance for Nashaf so far. And Bozarov. The ball was just a little bit behind him. He just had to check himself. But he couldn't keep his shot down. Norchev went to the near post. Bozarov around the penalty spot. You can see the ball just behind him, having to check his run. And as a result, couldn't get over the top of uh, his shot. And that's uh, an encouraging sign as far as Nasef are concerned. The fact that they've been able to open up that Al-Shabaab defence. Can they do it again, though, and find the back of the net? Chances have been few and far between in this match thus far. At the other end now... Barbary with the through ball. Goanka's driven wide by that pass. Gets it back. Venega trying to thread the ball through. Gets the shot in. Oh, yes! 2 0. Venega with a strike. 
And goodness me, at one end, Nassaf could have made it 1-1. At the other end, clinical stuff from Benega, and it's 2-0. Nice build-up. Looked as though the danger had gone when uh, the pass to Goanka just took him wide. But then Goanka slipped the ball back. Second bite at the cherry for Banega. And boy, didn't he take that well. Slide rule precision in off the inside of the post. Such a clean strike. And no chance at all for Nemetov in the Nasaf goal. Joy on the bench. And joy on the pitch. Benega. Such an influential figure, as I was saying in the first half, for Al-Shabaab, and he's done it again, hasn't he? It's a long road back now for Nassaf. But Benega just illustrating the importance of uh, clinical strikes on goal in the wake of that uh, attempt by Nassaf. At one end, Bozorov didn't take advantage of the opportunity. At the other, Benega most certainly did. Benega's third goal in this AFC Champions League campaign. His other two both came in match day one of the group stage against Mumbai City. One of them from the penalty spot. Frustration on the sidelines, meanwhile. Moreno not happy. Sure, inwardly, he's pleased his side have got a little bit of breathing space now. Tap on this uh, near side by Gebuliev Mananov. Another corner for the Uzbekistan side. Sidikov looks as though he's going to take it. No, in fact, he's going to leave it for Mananov. Yet another corner for Nasaf. What can they make of this? Got five players in the penalty area. Got another corner. Alikulov has just taken a blow to the shoulder. Let's have a look at what happened here. Challenging with Santi Mina. Certainly not clear from that replay what happened. Another corner though, and Mananov will take it once more. Wasn't a bad delivery that. And in the end, Davronov couldn't get over the top of it. Plenty to ponder for Burdiev. Some stern faces on the Nasaf supporters. As you'd expect given the circumstances. 2-0 down to a vastly more experienced side in this competition. Shabab 
have actually made it to the final of the AFC's top club competition. That was in the pre-Champions League days, 1992-93, when they lost to uh, Paz Tehran in Bahrain, in January 93, by a goal to nil. Just overplaying a little bit there. Hatan Babri. Barbary looking to thread the ball through, not able to do so. Whoever wins tonight goes forward to the quarter-finals. Take place on the 23rd. It's just a four-day gap. And then the semi-finals also here in Qatar. On the 26th, reminder, waiting for the winner of this Western region is uh, Rawa Red Diamonds. The final to take place over two legs on the uh, 29th of April and the 6th of May. Mina. Oh, great stuff. Benega has got the scent of goals in his nostrils and he strikes that one just over the top. Wasn't clear what his options were, he felt. Just over an hour gone then. Muradov is down for Nashaf. Let's have another look at that strike on goal by Benega. Caught it sweetly enough, but it was always just rising, wasn't it? Didn't get over the top of it. Frustration for him. Satisfaction too, I'm sure. He's put his side in a very good position with that second goal. Mina it back he's got runners ahead of him good challenge though excellent challenge by Bozarov Nasaf needs something to happen here Need to create something through balls looking for Mananov didn't find him and a chance for Al Harbi to use his pace again Chance is snuffed out though. Good work by Sidikov. Wonder how long it'll be before substitutions are contemplated. In fact, looking down from our commentary position, I can see a couple of players are being ready to come on for Nasaf. Kamdiev is one of those players. And also Rahimov. Shukrat. Kamdiev, number 28, a 33 year old, only joined last month from Quizzlequim. It's his second spell at Nasaf. He played eight seasons at Locomotive and uh, won the Super League twice while he was there. It's actually his eighth AFC Champions League campaign and his fourth with Nasaf. He's the number 28 you'll see shortly. And the number 29, Mohamed John Ramimov. Player from Tajikistan. Player who joined only recently, joined last month from uh, Istiglal. Themselves a uh, pretty common team in the AFC Champions League. 
Tajikistan international. It's going to be his uh, first appearance in what uh, will be a fifth AFC Champions League campaign. No break in play yet, though, to allow them to come on. Mananov with the cross. And the referee signalling now that those changes can uh, happen. That's really one of the players who's going to come off. And the other one, Gebuliev. Here goes Gebuliev. So, what can those changes do for Nasaf? way through to uh, one of the substitutes, Kamdiev. Moskovoy laying the ball back. First uh, really serious save that Kim's had to make this evening. Dispossessed. Good pressing from Shabab, forcing the ball to go all the way back to Nematov. Nematov uh, must be a frustrated figure back there in uh, goal for Nasaf because apart from picking the ball out of the net twice, he hasn't had an awful lot to do. They missed the breaks, though. More opportunity now for Ali Mazouk to uh, get clear. Decides to go infield instead. Play switch to Benega. Sharahili goes down and a challenge. That'll be a free kick. Norchev with the challenge. Haven't really seen the best of him this evening. He hasn't had the opportunity to shine, you'd say. And there's the first change being contemplated. We're about to be affected by Moreno. Farhad Al Mualo is about to come on. 28 year old forward. Joined from Al Etihad last August. Mina laying the ball back to Benega. Cool as you like, gets the ball across the pitch. Happy to knock the ball around now. Shabab, they've got that cushion of the two goal advantage just over halfway through this second half. Benega, the puppet master in the middle of the pitch, pulling the strings for Shabab. Passing triangle with uh, Goanka. Forward by Tambakti Demina. Chance now for uh, Barbary to run. And a shot too off target. It's actually uh, Hatan Barbary's last action of the evening. Mazy run. Right footed shot. Just past the left hand upright of. Uh, Nematov, 
and he makes way for Almuello. First time in Champions League action for Almuello, for Al Shabab, but four previous campaigns with Al Ittihad. mainly off the bench in the Saudi Professional League this season. Just one start, ten substitute appearances in the league. A reminder that Al-Shabaab are top of the table in Saudi Arabia at the moment. A chance for him to run now. Can he keep it in? No, he can't. Moreno urging his team forward, urging his team to push up from the back. Close the space. Shabab fans in the crowd, not a big attendance this evening. But those who've made the effort to come here more than happy with what they've seen. Just under 20 minutes to go then. four in this western region we could we just could you know end up with three teams from Saudi Arabia because uh, Al Hilal and Al Fazali both playing tomorrow evening Al Fazali against Fulad of Iran and Al Hilal will be on this pitch in 24 hours time against Shabab Al Ali from the United Arab Emirates who currently head the uh, UAE Pro League at the moment so that really will be a clash of the Titans that one as for now it's Mina on the ball on this near side our commentary position side of this Al Janoub Stadium forward all a little bit short for Al Sharahili the substitute Al Buwalo Manega score of the second goal looking for Ali Mazouk little give and go by Goanka didn't get it back though throwing goes the way of Al-Shabaab. Wallow does well there. it back happy to play keep ball at the moment Al Shabab and why not Wallo chance to run again using his pace getting the shot away it's deflected off Ali Kulov and well done in the end Mimatov to get across He's looked lively, hasn't he, Farhad Al Muwalo, since he's come on. Extra injection of pace on this left hand side. Testing some tiring legs. 
said at the outset we'd know whether Nassaf were fresh or a little bit undercooked. I think uh, the truth is probably more of the latter than the former. Here's an opportunity now and a really great last-ditch tackle. It looked for all the world as though Sidikov was going to get through. He's down, a little bit of cramp from him. Some screams from the NASA fans believing should have been uh, a VAR review. It was a combination of Al Habi and Al Sharahi. Play goes on. Reminder, VAR in operation. Nothing the VAR official saw there. It was caused to uh, alter the original decision or non-decision of our referee, Adam Mohamed Mark Hadmed. VAR official tonight from the UAE, Omar Mohamed Al Ali. Our referee just having a chat there with Sidikov. Maybe a little bit of dissent from Sidikov in the light of uh, that challenge. Just a reminder of who's in charge out on the pitch. It's just beyond Bozarov. Ali Mazouk goes all the way back to his keeper. Brilliant control by Benega, appreciated by the fans. Slips the ball inside and then gets it back. Opportunity to measure across, tries to uh, slide a pass in. Looking for Amuelo, can't find him. Ali Mazouk forward, again looking for Amuelo. Again, can't find him. Benega's still out here on the left-hand side. Tries to get the crossover, blocked by one of the substitutes. Kamidiev. substitutes being readied down below by uh, Nassaf a last throw of the dice from them players set to come on Suprob Nuruliev number 17 number 20 Shazad Akramov and number 24, Nordebek Mukarov. Players making way. Sidikov. Mananov. He's run himself into the ground on this uh, near side. Here he goes. And finally, Bozarov. Here the three players going off then, Mananov, Sidikov and Bozarov. So, they've shown their hand now. And for Nassaf, can these changes have a material effect on the outcome with uh, just about 11 minutes remaining? Nuruliev. His third season with Nassaf, a 25-year-old midfielder. Part of the Uzbek squad that won the uh, 2018 Under-23 Asian Cup in China. 
and they beat Vietnam in the final. It's number 17, number 20, Shakzod Akramov. Not the most uh, prolific starter over the last few years. Just three starts in the last two seasons of the Uzbek Super League, but he's only 19 years of age. And number 24, Mukarov. First appearance at senior level on the pitch, just 20 years of age in this uh, theatre. Mawalo, who's making a real nuisance of himself since he's come on as substitute. Taking advantage of a little bit of indecision there. shot deflected uh, behind and I reckon this is the first corner of the evening for Al-Shabaab Benega to take it in fact uh, it's their second corner one slipped my mind as you can see in the top left hand corner of your screen Wallo forward. Guanka out to this near side and just trying to curl it in. Santi Mina looking for the top corner. Didn't quite uh, get the direction right or the bend. Easy enough for Nemetov. On this near side, one of the substitutes, Nureliev, trying to cut inside. It's going to be a throw to Nasaf. Sands of time running out for them, though. Nasaf's campaign began uh, in March of last year in this competition against Banias, which is located just about halfway between Dubai and Abu Dhabi. 2 0 success there. Six group games following. It looks as though finally the campaign is drawing to a close. Change now coming up for Al Shabab. Turkey Alamar getting ready to come on. And he's replacing Christian Goanka. Goanka, who's been uh, substituted in 13 matches in the Saudi Professional League. It's no real surprise that he's uh, made way to Turkey. Alamar coming on, the 23-year-old. Regular member of the squad for the past six seasons. One of uh, three Al-Shabaab players who uh, played in Uzbekistan last summer as Saudi Arabia won the AFC Asian Cup at under-23 level. Beat Uzbekistan 2 0 in the final, and it's 2 0 here at the moment. The back post, Mina. Oh, that's good reflexes from Nemetov. Flapping the ball away from the Spaniard just when it seemed likely that he was going to go round the keeper. down for Al Shabab and Smotab Al Harbi. Let's hope his injury, uh, whatever it is, isn't too serious. As I mentioned earlier on in commentary this evening, it's his birthday tomorrow. 
It looked as though Mina was going to get through here. And then that was an uh, excellent bit of goalkeeping. Ball got away from uh, Alamar, substitute. And then that's good work, isn't it, by young uh, Nematov. Harby making his way off. Hopefully he's going to be okay to continue. No indication at the moment of uh, a change being readied on the Al-Shabaab bench. And sure enough, Al-Harbi is now back into the action. Nuruliev inside. Another one of the substitutes now. Kamadiev. Again, the attack breaks down. Not the best of clearances by Kim. Mazouk inside. Bit of a hospital pass from him, though his team into a little bit of danger room on this near side now for Nuriliev measures his cross to the back post but unfortunately there's no one there referee gives a goal kick much to the chagrin of Alikulov who felt he was just pushed just felt he was eased off the ball by Ali Mazouk the referee didn't see anything that required any sort of decision from him. Can Nasaf set up a grandstand finish then? finding a goal from somewhere. Oh dear, it uh, wasn't what was intended from uh, Ashmuradov. He was playing himself and his side into trouble. kick on that far side I think for offside yes indeed that's why Akramov the substitute coming back from an offside position deemed to be interfering with play that sort of night really for Nasaf and their fans chances that they've created have been few and far between plenty of endeavor but ultimately no cutting edge just that little bit of extra experience from Al Shabab and the ability to be clinical in front of goal as well been the difference between the two sides tonight. Mina. Nematov's come a long way from home there to try and snuff out the danger. Just about managed it in the end. Good learning experience for him this evening. changes then third side Al Rabehi number 25 waiting to come on and also Majid Kanaba and the players making way Sharahili number 89 and 
well. So uh, Nada Al Sharari. Here he goes, Al Sharari. Said Al Rabehi, number 25. His first season at Al Shabab joined in July last year from uh, Itifak. Actually appeared in the uh, AFC Champions League in 2017 for Al Ali. Number six, Majid uh, Kanabai, number 29. So he had uh, 29 years of age. Benega trying to put some icing on uh, the cake. And in the end, Nematov makes the save, not particularly cleanly, but he kept it out. Minimum of five minutes to be played then, as indicated by our fourth official. It wasn't uh, that well struck a shot from Benega. And that might have been what deceived Nematov, and led to the slightly clumsy looking save. Managed to get it behind though. Officials. Canaba with the header. Alamar turning. Mazouk down, thankfully not for the count. Well, no prizes for guessing who they're supporting. The Al Shabab fans absolutely delighted, made the journey here, and it's been well worthwhile. Into the quarter finals of the AFC Champions League. four sides in the western region. Now though tomorrow night who the other three are. It'll just be a case of uh, rest and recovery for them. Ahead of their next match on the uh, 23rd. And of course they'll have Carlos Junior available for that one. now in the country here in Qatar after that passport emergency. What an addition he'll be. Their top scorer in this competition. Very nicely done by Al Shabab playing their way out of trouble. And a chance again for Almawalo to use his pace. Good tackle in the end, though. It's an excellent tackle by uh, Davronov. Sort of consolation goal, perhaps, for Nasaf. It certainly like one, I'm sure. Al Shabab, though, really illustrating why they've been so effective in this competition just one goal conceded in the group stages and again it looks as though they're heading for their sixth clean sheet in seven matches in this edition of the competition yeah. 90 seconds more work for them to do to ensure that that's the case see this very often these days do you a long clearance from the goalkeeper side so wedded to playing out from the back these days
back forward. An opportunity for uh, Moscovoy to chase. Couldn't get on the end of it though. Benega, 34 years young, still pulling the strings. Looking to set Turkey Alamar away on this near side. Not able to do so. It's all over here at the Al Janoub Stadium and it's victory for Al Shabab. What a wonderful start to 2023 they've had. Their recent form has been exceptional. They're now unbeaten in eight matches, seven of those in the Saudi Pro League. The journey comes to an end then for Nasaf. No side from Uzbekistan has made it this far in this edition but uh, they bow out at the round of 16 stage two goals for Al-Shabaab then one in each half the first from Hussein Al-Qatani a deflected effort in the 12th minute and then nine minutes into the second half, Eva Benega, the evergreen player, there he is, sealed the deal as far as Al Shabab were concerned, with a bullet strike from the edge of the area that uh, ended up in the back of the net off the inside of Nematov's left hand upright. The Al Shabab fans, they're happy. Remember, they've never won this competition. But it's been a competition that's been, uh, well, very successful indeed from a Saudi Arabian perspective. Six champions in total from Saudi Arabia in the history of the uh, Champions League. Can they make it seven? Al-Shabaab will certainly hope that they can do so. Solid performance from them then, and they go into the quarter-finals. For Nasaf, plenty of good to reflect upon, and they can now look forward to the Uzbekistan Super League starting. All over then here at the Al Janoub Stadium, and it's finished. Al-Shabaab 2, Nasaf 0.